Hallelujah. A year ago, I, I, I had this right. thought to go back to work. I, I did uh, home care for a very long time. I did foster care, and, and then I did adult care, and, and, uh, and, you know, when the adult care wasn't anymore, I, you know, I wasn't really working. I was here in, you know, with the ministry, and I just had this urge to go back to work, even if it was part-time. And I did. I did. I went back to work part time and I worked with people like my brother here, um, uh, Brandon, and then. And um, I just, um, I've had a client, I've, I've had maybe like three or four clients since I started working last October. And um, it is such a blessing uh, to see that when, you know, they, they get in the car and, you know, put on certain music and, and it's like it brings back life to them and they'll remember and they'll start singing. And one of them was barely could talk and he said, I know that song. Oh. Uh, that, that's Joel Osteen or, or, or this, this. And I'm like, what do you know about Joel Osteen? <laughs> but, I mean, that stirs my spirit up, yeah. you know, yeah. when, I, when I would get in the car with them and, and they'll start to sing. And one one girl, she's from um, Australia, I think she is, she's from. And I guess she hasn't been exposed to, like, you know, ministry and stuff like that. So she get in the car with me one day and, and, and she said, she said, Debbie, I remember that. I went to Catholic school and I remember the nur um uh, the the what they call it the nuns and and I remember Jesus and I and it's like memories started to come oh, back yeah. and it just blessed my soul and then God of course put the icing on the cake with Brandon on Friday Brandon accepted Jesus and. Oh. Showing that movie, The Forge, right? We're telling yes, you guys about yes. it, right? He loves it. So, so I, I, we're driving, and this movie has to do with this young man accepting the Lord, too. So, wow. But God did all of this before we even got to the movies. Wow. So, after the movies, wow. I went to the uh, to a, a head food store out there in, in, in Lanuet to get something, run into some sisters that from the former church that we used to go. Wow. They had just ministered to somebody, wow. and we're hugging in the store, and we're having a revival in the <laughs> middle of the store. to me that touched my heart. He said, I have a community now. protect his child and everything. Oh, wow. 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 I, felt, I felt his hand on top of my head. Yeah. And when I woke up, I started crying that he was there for me. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 So God is doing a mighty job. Yes. Yes. And, Thank you, Jesus. and now I understand why he sent me back to work. And I believe yes. it's going to yes. be, yes. yes. be lots more like that. Yes. 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 We are his children. Yes. 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 It's and then there was like a song I was singing for, oh. you know, it's called Bless, Bless the Lord on My Soul. Oh. I sang that twice when we went to the party as well and we came back home. Yes, and that's one of his favorites. So maybe one day I'll let him sing it for you all. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's get to the word because yeah. it's an awesome word. God bless you, honey. Thank you. It is an awesome word. It is an awesome word. So Father God, how about Shaya? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. 
We thank you. We love you. We love you. We worship and we glorify you. Yes, Father. Yes. And we honor your high name. We thank you for your presence that's in this room. We thank you, Lord God, because when it's you, it's so good. And it is so peaceful. Yes. And it is so easy. Yes. Yeah. When you are in the midst of something, it is so easy. Yes. And I believe you died for us to experience easy. Yes. It is not your intention for this walk of ours to be hard, stressful, or difficult, or not attainable. It is easy. And I thank you for bringing us into that type of atmosphere. Amen. To recognize how easy it is. And that if we continue to trust you, we are going to breeze through this thing and one day be with you in heaven. So we thank you for anointing your word. And not my lips, God. I'm just a servant. I'm just, I am just a messenger. But if you anoint my lips, it will be spoken the way you gave it to me. In Jesus' name. I like this little uh, thank you. Uh -huh. Got it? Take your time. Thank you. I I I like this little saying um, that I've heard many people say, and it says, uh, Sarah and Abraham felt they were too old. Jacob was a liar. Mm -hmm. Leah struggled with rejection. Mm -hmm. Rachel struggled with infertility. Mm. Mm. Moses was a stutterer and a murderer. Mm. Ruth was an idol worship, oh worshiper. Mm. Gideon was afraid and insecure. Mm. Rahab was a prostitute. Mm. Mm. Samson was disobedient and a show off. Mm. Jeremiah felt inferior because he was too young. Mm. Timothy mm. struggled with stress and had ulcers. Huh. That's why Paul told him to take some wine for his stomach. Mm. Mary had demons. Mm. David was an adulterer and a murderer. Mm. The woman at the well had several husbands. Mm. Peter denied Christ three times. Mm. All the disciples slept and ran away when Jesus was arrested. Mm. And Martha was worried about everything. Mm. Yet God used everyone of them. Mm. Mm. He never... He never felt, oh, I can't use you because you don't have it together. I can't, I can't use you because you're not good enough. God seems to always, uh, um, um, what's the word? Um, he liked to use things like that. People right. that seem to be, uh, huh? The base things are called. The, the, the exactly. The to confound the wise. the wise. So I was reading the Bible the other day, and I hope I'll get to Psalms 103, but before we get started, let's go to, um, before I go to Psalms 103, let's go to uh, Second Chronicles. Glory be to God. Second Chronicles, <coughs> chapter 7, and we'll start at verse 12. Second Chronicles chapter 7, and we'll start at verse 12. Hallelujah. And verse 12 reads as follows Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. And now God is repeating to Solomon what Solomon had asked him in the beginning, right? He says, when I shut up heaven, because Solomon had had this big prayer for you. You guys okay? 714? Okay. No, I'm 14 now. I'm 14 now. I'm 14. Yeah, I'm 14 now. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm 13. 13. 713. 713, yeah. So my, mine, is, mine is a little bit different because this is a new King James, King James Bible. 
So, so God is answering Solomon because Solomon had dedicated the temple to him. Solomon had told all these things to God and he had said, God, when the people forget about you, when the people go about their way and they don't, they don't, they don't honor you, God, if they come back and they say they're sorry, will you heal their land and forgive them? So now Jesus, God is coming to Solomon. Mm -hmm. Listen up, honey. God is coming to Solomon and God is now telling Solomon what he will do because of the dedication of this temple. So verse 13, I was saying, when I shut up heaven, it's talking to Solomon, when I shut up heaven and there's no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people, verse 14, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven I will, eat, I will forgive their sin and heal their land. That verse is used very lightly, right? People, people, people use it as a means of beating God's people over the head. They use it as a meme of, well, y'all better get it right, and this nation better do this because of this. They use it sort of that, uh, uh, an indication of doom and damnation, right? But what God is responding to Solomon, not, not so much as a condemnation, but God is saying to Solomon, Solomon, what you pray and you ask me, that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If my people, if they go away from me and they, and they, and, and they get into idol worship, which was, which was their greatest sin that they were committing. Right? They were always, they kept going back to these false gods and they kept going back to these things that were made by hands. So God said, if they turn from that, turn from those things, hear from heaven, and will forgive, he will forgive their sin and heal their land. Amen. And now God is saying, this is the part that got to me, but I think I need to go to Psalms to kind of set up this message. Let's go to Psalms, but hold your hands there because we're going to come back to verse 15, and that's where we're going to break down, break it down. So let's go over to Psalms 103, starting at verse 4. I'm sorry, verse 8. Yeah, so Psalms 103, starting at verse 8. And it says, <laughs> Amen. And it says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. He will not always thrive, thrive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. Aren't those all good things? Aren't they all good things? Right? It says, The Lord is merciful, and he is gracious. He slow to anger, and he abounds in mercy. He will not always thrive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. Oh, my God. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Isn't that amazing? God doesn't hold things against us. God is not waiting and beating us over our head or waiting for us to mess up a second time so he can say, I told you so. Because he's such a merciful God and he's such a good God. And that's what we're going to see when we go back to Second Chronicle. Not, neither does he punish us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth those who fear him. God always, it says, uh, 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 first the, the spiritual, then the natural, or, or is it the other way around? The spiritual? First the spiritual, then the natural, where God gives an example where it's like the spiritual and it, it compares to the natural. I do want it. Okay. But I like this because what God is showing here is that if a natural father can pity that child, mm -hmm. Have you ever seen a child get out of get out of a whipping? Yes. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> they know how to talk their way out of it, and they look at daddy with those big, 
big, beautiful eyes and, but daddy, but, but you know what? And, and have a way to talk to that daddy to get out of a whipping. And God is saying, if your, have, your earthly father can have that type, and that child knows they did wrong. Mm -hmm. They know they took that cookie when daddy and mommy said not to take it. Yes, Before yes. they can have an argument and because they're so cute and their eyes are batting at that daddy especially, he said, okay, go ahead and get the cookie. Okay. So if God is saying, if the natural man is able to say to that child, go get that cookie, no. how much more a father that loves us? Yes. How much yes. more a heavenly father that even when we mess up, even when we don't do what we're supposed to do, and we know we we know we did it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We can go to our daddy in heaven, and we can say, Father, I messed up. I like to talk about myself. I like to confess about things that I did. And I can't tell you what happened to me yesterday. I can't. I can't explain. I can't put it into words. I can't. I can't. I can't put my finger on what I was feeling. But I was feeling some kind of way. Mm -hmm. And I was angry and I was upset and I was annoyed and I was flustered and I was, and, and all these thoughts were coming to my head. And, and I felt like I couldn't get my bearings. I couldn't get my, my get out of that rut mm. that, that I was in. And it was constant, it was constant, it was constant. And everything seemed to annoy me yesterday. Mm. <laughs> and all I kept saying was, God, I know I'm not handling this. I know I'm not handling this the right way right now. So I need your grace. Mm -hmm. I, 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 know, I know I'm not thinking the right way right now. Yes. But I need your grace. Mm -hmm. God, I know that I'm not answering my husband the way I'm supposed to like mm -hmm. I normally do. Maybe with more patience, but I need your grace. Mm -hmm. I could not explain to you what it was I was fighting, and I kept trying to shake it. I kept trying to get out of it, and it seemed like the more I tried, is the harder it became. Mm. And I went the whole day that way. And how many know that when we go through days like those, and the enemy comes to you at the end of the day, and he tries to beat you with it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember when you did yes. do that? You remember when you said that? You remember how you acted? Yes. You remember yes. what you did? You remember? You and remember? Guess you brought it in the, guess you brought it in the first. Place. He was the one that brought it, and then he beats yes. you up with it. Yes. So, 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 so. Last night, you know, Pastor went upstairs and. And, and, I, and I usually hang out down here so I can get my exercise going, you know, and all that stuff. So I stayed down here for, by myself, and I felt that spirit of condemnation coming upon me mm -hmm. yeah. about how I handled the whole day. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. And I looked to heaven, and I said, God, your word tells me not to go to bed. Don't let the sun go down on my wrath. Yeah. That's another scripture that people think it only has to do with a married couple, but yeah. it's not. Yeah. Yes. Anything that's a wrath, anything that yes. you did, you you yes. struggled with that day, that's your wrath. Yes. 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 Anything that you had issues with that day, that's your wrath. Yes. So you don't want to go to bed. You don't want to go to bed with those thoughts of what you had thought about all day and oh and I just hate them and I oh boy and they did me this and oh and I said this. That's right. So yes, God is. is saying, don't go to bed with that. Yes, 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 it is. You don't even need to call somebody. If the person is next to you, then by all means, honey, I'm sorry. I don't know why I acted that way. Mm -hmm. But if you can't reach that person, Amen. Mm -hmm. if you can't change the situation that had occurred that day. To your father, you can say, Lord, I'm going to bed now. Mm -hmm. yes. And whatever I dealt with today, I don't know why I responded the way I did. Mm -hmm. And this is my conversation with God last night, mm -hmm. right here sitting. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, I give you my wrath. I give you the impatience. I give you the, the, the I, I failed today. I just felt like everything I did, I was just, I just kept, I couldn't get my thoughts. I mm -hmm. give them all to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. My God. And I choose to wake up the next day Hallelujah. with a clean slate. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Hallelujah. God. Because when you let it go, yes. when you wake up that next day, you don't wake up with that stuff on your mind. Amen. It's gone. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord brought that song to me about uh, uh, um, um, 
the scripture that talks about new mercies, I see every morning. Mm -hmm. So when I let it go at night, no matter what I go through, no matter what I feel, no matter what I experience, even if I curse somebody out and I wasn't supposed to, I slap somebody and I wasn't supposed to, I had thoughts that I wasn't supposed to, when I let it go, Amen. and I said, Father, I give it to you, and I receive your thanks, your forgiveness, because that's what you told me you were going to do. When I wake up the next day, guess what I have? Your mercy. Amen. That what I did last night, what I did yesterday, have nothing to do with today. Amen. Amen. Yesterday has nothing to do with today. Amen. Because I entered into this new day with new mercies. Amen. Oh my God. Amen. So what God is teaching us and what God is showing us is if the natural father, a natural father, can have pity in that child, because that child is saying, Daddy, I'm sorry. I promise you I'm not going to do it again. And that father can say, okay. Okay, Izzy. <laughs> because I know she probably, she yeah. probably pleading in the fourth, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> pleading when you're pleading, oh, pleading in the fourth? The fifth, the fifth. Yeah. 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 I know Izzy know how to plead the fifth last night. <laughs> so if that father that is natural, right? Mm -hmm can pity that child. How much more our Father much in heaven that created the Father that's pitying that child. Mm. So we can come to Him with the same affection, with the same uh, 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 um, confidence, if you will. Mm -hmm. To say, I, I messed up, Lord. Daddy, I, I just, I just, I just couldn't get it. I just couldn't get it together, Lord. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And He showers down and He said, okay, my dear. We can rub our heads like he rubbed uh, 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 Brandon's, right? Mm -hmm. And let us know that it's okay. Mm -hmm. You can go on with your day now. Yeah. What you did yesterday, what, what was that again? I don't even remember. Yes. And that's what we just read. He says he throws it into the sea of forgetfulness. Yes. Never, Never to remember, to remember anymore. anymore. Verse 12 says, as far as the east is from the west so far, has he removed our transgressions from us? As a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth those who fear him. For he knows our frame. Oh God, I love this. He knows our frame. He knows that this, our spirit never gets tired. And I think when we enter into that place of understanding that the natural man gets tired, our flesh gets tired. That's why we have to sleep. That's why we have to eat right. That's why we have to exercise. That's why we have to uh, 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 give it rest. That's why we have to do all these things because this natural body can only take but so much. Amen. So when we don't do certain things or we don't act, we don't, we, 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 we run and we run and we run and we rip and rip and rip and rip. And we get tired, then those things come at us, and we don't even know how to handle. And we're snapping, and we're. And I said, God, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know why it was. All I know is that I couldn't get it together. Maybe I was tired. I worked all week, and I don't normally work a full week. I usually only work two days, but I worked yeah. five days last week. I was busy for five days. So, but anyway, huh? Plus Jersey, exactly. We ministered uh, in Jersey, so it was a full week, amen. Yes. So, so, but so, so, so God says here, for He knows our frame; He remembers that we are dust. Mm -hmm. Can you? Isn't that a good God? He knows. He's. He knows. He, he knows. That that that's not the real Deborah. That that that, that snapping and and, and 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 get annoyed, you know, every second, or because my spirit man is always willing, mm -hmm. but my flesh, flesh is weak. Is weak. For whatever reason, our flesh get weak. And that's, sin is never in the spirit. Do you know that? When we do wrong and we falter, it's flesh, never in the spirit. Flesh, uh, it's always in the flesh, flesh. Right? Yeah. So God is saying here, I don't hold it against you. That's why he said he's a merciful God when you go back to verse 8, right? Amen. And he's slow to anger and he's abounding in mercy. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. Mm. Mm. So when we come to him and we say, Daddy, I'm sorry. I, I know I, I, kept, I, kept, I know you're telling me I should have rested and I should have not do that. But, but, but I kept pushing it. Now I'm tired and I snapped. And, Forgive me, I'm sorry. 
Okay, go to bed. I'll rub your head while you sleep. Mm -hmm. I know you didn't listen, but go on. Isn't he a good father? Mm -hmm. We sometimes think that God is like natural, like natural people, right? I didn't have a, a, a excuse me, I didn't have a relationship with my dad per se. So my mom and my dad, uh, uh, they, they divorced or separated when I was divorced when I was a little girl. And I believe from what my mom shared with me is that he left when I was two. So after two years old, I didn't, I didn't know him and I don't remember him ever coming back to Panama to visit us, but he would send things, you know, for us, you know, like Easter boy, you couldn't tell us nothing. I mean, we had a cheap little dress and the purse and the, and the shoes, the patent leather shoes. It has to be patent leather, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And the little socks with the, with the ruffles and all yeah, that stuff, right? So he would send all those things to Panama, and that was the only connection I had with my dad. Aww. And I remember one of my uncles saying to me, write to your dad, write, write to your dad. But I, I, I don't know, I, I, I just didn't. I didn't think that I could write good enough English to, to send him a letter. So anyway, so at 18, we came to America, and that's my first time meeting my father. I was 18 years old. And I left Panama with the thought that he was going to pay. See how it, how, in our mind, right? <laughs> I was like, he going to pay for all those years that he wasn't there for me. I didn't know how he was going to pay, but I was going to make him pay. <laughs> Thank you for forgiveness. But anyway, so I come to New York and I meet him for the first time and I'm, and I'm looking him down like, hey, you want me to do what? Love you? This is what I'm thinking in my head, right? I'm supposed to love you. I'm supposed to respect you. I don't even know you, bro. I don't even know you. So, you know, he, he, he did as much as he could and thank God for his wife. She was a very lovely, kind woman. Thank God for my stepmother. She's still, she's still alive and I, I keep reach out to her from time to time. Oh, yeah. But anyway, she was just so loving. She was such a loving person. I mean, I remember my brother and I came and she would take us shopping for school and stuff. And I mean, when we went to her house, I mean, it was free for all. I mean, you get right in the refrigerator. She would go shopping on there. All the food was there. So my brother and I were like, we're going to Long Island. <laughs> And she was just such a very kind person. Wow. My dad, on the other hand, wasn't all that. We used to say, you gotta hit that man hard to let go that dollar. But anyway, like that. Anyway, anyway, you have a bunch of. <laughs> I'm not gonna go. <laughs> Big bills on the, and the inside, and you put a bunch of single on the outside, mm -hmm. so they were reaching this pocket. Like, let me give you something. You oh. think you go get a fifty, and he pulls out two dollars. Oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> we got all the big boxes on the bottom, you know. Nose in me, I was like, go in there. <laughs> oh my god! Anyway, anyway, but I remember oh, a moment that I had. So, 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 getting back to. I'm gonna get back at my dad, right? Mm -hmm. So I come to America, and and back then it was um uh, I think it was Connecticut was the, the um I don't know if you remember when you, you you used to have to wait to Sundays to make your long distance call because it was cheaper then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was was it Bell or I don't know? And I, I, yeah. yeah. Bell. Mm -hmm. So. And, and people didn't make calls all the time because it was so expensive, like 25, 25 cents a minute or something like that. Yeah. So I said, hmm, so my boyfriend was still in Panama and now I'm in America and I got to talk to him somehow. Mm -hmm. So somebody got to pay. My mama already told me you can't run up my bill and she put a lock on her phone. Mm -hmm. So going to dad's house was very convenient. So I would go and I would talk for hours to my boyfriend. Wow. I was like, the money you didn't give me when I was a little girl, bro, you gonna give me now. That was my mindset. Thank God he saved me and changed my mindset. You know? So but I remember when, when God began to, you know, change my heart and I started, Yeah, yeah, yeah. My sister was glad when the Lord saved me, Nadine, because she said, Girl, your mind scared me. But anyway. Oh, So the Lord starts to now work on me and my sister's happy. And she said, 
So we get to my dad now and my heart is changing and I'm, I'm allowing him to be a little bit of a father to be, you know. So I remember I got in trouble because, you know, I, I don't think anybody in the room has never gotten in trouble. So <laughs> got myself in trouble and, you know, got pregnant before I got married. And so y'all are a blessing, amen. So, so I'm going to dad and I come running from mom's house, right? Because I can't tell mom because she'll kill me. So I'm running, I go to dad and... For the first time, I felt his love. Aww. I mean, he came in because my, my stepmother found out. Mm -hmm. And yes. she said, Debbie, you're in trouble. And I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. She said, have you told your mom? I said, no. Mm -hmm. She said, talk to your dad. Mm -hmm. And I'm shaking because I'm like, I've never had that kind of connection with my yes, mother. Yes. Mm -hmm. But my dad came in the bedroom where I was, and he sat on the floor next to me. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh my god. Oh my god. And he spoke to me with such tenderness mm -hmm. oh, wow. and stroked my head. Oh. And he said to me, he said, you know, uh, Debbie, because I, I told him, I said, I'm living here. I'm not going home. My mom will kill me. Oh. I'm staying here. Mm -hmm. And it was okay, but he, but he, he gave me wisdom. Yeah. He said, Debbie, anywhere you go is going to be hard. Mm -hmm. He said, so I think you should go back home. Mm -hmm. and let your mom know what's going on. You're welcome to stay here, mm -hmm. but everywhere you go, things are gonna be hard. Or, or everywhere you go, you have to follow rules. Mm -hmm. Cause I thought I go to my dad because I don't have to follow rules, right? Mm -hmm. But I felt his love as a father. Yes. So I said all of that to say, if God can use a natural man to minister to us in that way, mm -hmm. even though I didn't know my father that well, mm -hmm. How much more a loving father oh, in yeah. heaven. Mm. God wants us to see him truly as he is. Loving, kind. It doesn't matter what we go through. It doesn't matter what we experience. That he's actually that kind of father that can stroke our head. Mm. He is challenged and he was able to tell us that God stroked his head. Yes. Mm -hmm. He said God came in his room and stroked his head. And oh. I'm like, oh my God. Because he's such a touchable God. He's real and he wants us to know that. Not to run from him when we get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Not to run away from him when we're feeling discouraged or we feel shame or we, or we feel pain or we feel disappointment. He said, don't run. He said, but come to my throne. Come boldly. Right? Because he said, come to my throne. Right? Where you can receive mercy and grace and I'll help you in your time of need. So now let's go over to um, second. Second, yeah, second uh, Chronicles and we'll go to verse 15. He's a loving father and he's bringing us to a place. Where he, what baby? I'm sorry. Uh, seven. Seven, yes. Verse, verse 15. We'll go to 15. He's teaching us that this, 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 this Christian walk is such an easy one. It, 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 it should never be hard. It should never be, oh my God, I'm going through this again. And no. oh my God. He wants us to know that things are going to happen because we're living in a, in a, in a, 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 a world that deteriorates, right? Everything deteriorates. Um, um, iron. Uh, 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 it doesn't matter what, what it is. The materials, right? It, yes. it, it deteriorates, yeah, right? Yeah. Our bodies yes. are not made to last yes. forever. Yes. Not in this world, right? right? When we get to heaven, it will. Yes. But here you always have it because it's changing. So, But God wants us to experience heaven and earth. He wants us to know that even though we're living in a fall, that's the word, thank you, Holy Spirit. Even though we're living in a fallen world, mm -hmm. He wants us to live in a world, even though it may be fallen, where he can feed us with wisdom, as we've been hearing from pastor, with wisdom and understanding, so that we can escape some things. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. We can escape it, Amen. and at the same time, enjoy what he has for us to enjoy. Amen. Right? So he's saying to us, just keep your ears attentive to my mouth. Keep your ears there. Amen. Listen and follow and, and understand that I created you to experience goodness, Amen. good things, because I'm a good God. So what the devil might have dis dis disrupted in, 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 in Eden, 
Jesus Christ came to give it back to us. Mm -hmm. So verse 15, it says, this blew, I don't like to say blow my mind, this encouraged me when I read it. And I have read this chapter for years. Mm -hmm. I have read it many times and I never saw what the Lord showed me the other day. Mm -hmm. Verse 15, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. He's still continuing the conversation with Solomon, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. As for you, he's telling Solomon now, as for you, Solomon, if you walk before me as your father David walked and do according to all that I have commanded you, and if you keep my statutes and my judgment, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom as I covenanted with David your father, saying, you shall not fail to have a man as ruler in Israel. That thing blew me away because I had never seen it. Now we know the story of David, don't we? Yeah. We know how much David messed up. Yeah. I mean, he killed, took the man's wife, killed the man, mm -hmm. <laughs> tried to cover it up. Mm -hmm. When, the, when, when, when the, uh, uh, Nathan came to him, he tried to cover it up and say, oh, that man must die, and all these different things. So we know David wasn't innocent. Why would God say to him, as for you, if you walk before me as your father David walked. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. God never said, and you better not be like your father because he took that wife and he killed that man. That's right. That's right. God didn't say those things. He said, if you, Solomon, walk before me as your father walked. So what was God referring to? I'm sure he wasn't telling Solomon, Solomon, go ahead and, and, and commit no, adultery. No. Solomon, go ahead. <clears throat> he was saying to Solomon, if you have a heart after me, Yes. As your father David did, son, Solomon, I will give you these things. Come on. Mm -hmm. All God remembered about David are the good things that he did. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Only the good things that he did. Only the good things. He wasn't out. He wasn't yes. trying to stir up generational curses. Of, David, I'm telling you, your, your father did this. And, and because he did this, this that's not. God, wow. God's objective. No, 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 no. All he wanted Solomon to know, Solomon, mm. if you have a heart after me, mm. like your father did, mm. because in this, in spite of David's uh, uh, adulterous, uh, adulterous life, because he had many, many wives, and in spite of the fact that he murdered this man, even after he knew Christ the way he, God the way he did, God did not hold it against him. Mm. Why he didn't hold it against him? Because he had a heart after God. Yes, 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 yes. David understood. I don't. I, I know I messed up. Oh, gosh, I am. <coughs> David understood. I know. I, God messed up. That's where you have Psalms fifty-one. That's where yes. you have. Psalms. Oh, come on, David. That's where you get Psalms fifty-one from. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your love. Huh? Oh, God. Tried to hide it, mm -hmm. but, but but you know I, I don't I don't remember where the scripture is. It says when, when when he tried to do that, it was something it said about his flesh. His flesh it, it, it was like because David had such a relationship with God that when he had, was separated during that time because he was trying to hide it, mm -hmm. God didn't separate from David. Yeah. David separated from God. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. He separated because he felt like, uh, he uh, 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 mm. when we have reached a certain place in life or when we have walked a certain way and we have attained certain things and in a moment of weakness, we falter, the devil beats us up with it. Mm. And then, how could you? Mm. You? <laughs> I would have never expected that for And you saw what you did? And you'll never overcome it. Mm -hmm. But I heard someone say this. Shame only remains shame when you don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. When you talk about it and when you tell people that what you have gone through and what you have experienced and you're able to expose that thing, it takes the sting out of shame 
and you're able to walk through it with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So God is saying to Solomon, walk with me as your father did. Amen. And you would have all these things. And so as I continue to read, I realize and I recognize that God did hold a lot of things against people that we thought he should have. The 12 sons of, 12 sons of Israel, Jacob's sons, mm -hmm. he never, they are around the throne in heaven. Those very 12 mm -hmm. that did all these wicked things, mm -hmm. that did all these crazy things. Mm -hmm. I mean, this one slept with the fathers, this and that, and they are around mm -hmm. the throne of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what this says to me is, God is not so much concerned about the things that we do that is wrong. He doesn't hold it against us and causes us to feel like we can't move forward or we can't, we can't, we can't overcome these things. What he wants us to know is that that's not, that's, that's, that's not where I see you. You may be there now, what you did, but I see you down the road preaching, preaching up a storm. I see you opening hospital in Jamaica. Amen. I see you marrying as a young virgin, I see you. Because God doesn't hold on to things that we didn't do wrong. He, he reaches down inside of us and he looks for that that resembles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He looks for those things that resemble him. Yes. Amen. The goodness in us. Amen. And he works on us and he applies us and he, and he molds us and he, and he brings us to that place where we can not only know it for ourselves, but the world can see it and experience it and say, oh my God. I remember when. Mm -hmm. Because he's that kind of God. So the children of Israel, and we are, uh, there's going to be a lot of surprises in heaven. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. 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 There's going to be a lot of surprises in heaven. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Because I have sent, I've sent a lot of people to hell before. <laughs> <laughs> And I will sit back and wait for God to do it too. Mm. I know God gonna get them. Oh, Ooh, and don't let them trip in front of me. I say, aha, see? See, that's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for them to trip. I was waiting for them to have a, 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 a bad day or something. So I can say, I told you. So I said, keep messing with God. Children, I mean, I, I had all kinds of sayings, right? <laughs> oh, my God. He had to teach me, Amen. right? Amen. That that's not the way. Even that scripture that we say, um, uh, 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 he, you'll heap up coals upon their heads. Fire, fire, upon, upon, their head. fire upon their head, right? Yeah. I used to say, yeah. Let them drink. Uh, girl, I used to say, God, I'm going to get you. Yeah. Burn them up, Lord. Burn them up. Burn them up. And that scripture is the total opposite. It doesn't mean that God is going to burn them up. But it means fire melts. So what it means by, 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 by that fire is that it's the Holy Ghost fire. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the Holy Ghost fire causes you to be remorseful. Mm -hmm. It causes you to, to see yourself. Yes. 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 So instead of saying, burn them up, God, we, we, <laughs> I said it a lot of times. Yeah. Thank you for delivering me, Lord. So instead of that, now we say, Lord, heap up coals. Mm -hmm. Heap up coals of fire in their head, Lord. Mm -hmm. So that their their thoughts will be warmed, oh, and they'll know see they'll they'll, they'll, they'll then begin to see themselves, yes. and they'll see that what they did is wrong, yes. and oh. will want them to change. Oh. Yes. The goodness of God yes. lead us to repentance. Yes. When you do good to them, when they were doing evil to you, yes. and that that coal of fire. Why am, I, why am I being mean to Nadine or to or to or, or, or to Arlene or mm -hmm. Pastor? What, what? I shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. That's what that heat of cold yes, 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 yes. It warms them and it causes them to see yes. themselves. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be surprised when we get to heaven. Amen. Because there are going to be people there that we would have not imagined would even make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. But it's because of their heart. Mm -hmm. God 
held it against the children of Israel because they kept walking away from him. They were worshiping false gods. And God was saying, I brought you out of Israel, you, out of Egypt. You saw me open the Red Sea. Why would you go and light a candle and think that candle can, can save you? Or why would you, oh my God. Or why would you build a, 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 a something with your hand and put it in an oven to bake and then bow before it and say, this is my God. He said, you see my power, Israel people. You saw where it was day on your side and night on the other side. You saw that your, your water was pure and theirs was full of blood. Y'all saw my mighty hands. And all I was asking of you, Israel, is not to get pulled into the false God. Because I want people to see that there's one God. But Israel kept dipping and dabbing. And mm. that's why that bothers bother God more than anything else that they did. Amen. So what God is saying to us, <laughs> keep our eyes on him. Know that he is the one that can bring us out. Know that he is the one that loves us beyond anything else. And it doesn't matter what we feel. It doesn't matter what we go through. Yes. It doesn't matter what we experience. Amen. We can come to him like a child goes to her father okay. oh. or his father and Amen. said, Daddy, I'm having a bad day. I just need more grace today. Amen. And he's such a, he's easy to be touched. He's just Amen. so easy, easy to be touched. Amen. Amen. Where we may get tripped up is that we don't want to let it go. Amen. Right? Because it's so familiar to us. Yes. Right? So anger, if somebody has dealt with anger for a very long time, and that's the only thing that they know, it's became, it's, it has become a crutch to them. Mm -hmm. And even though it may not feel good, a lot of times we go back, we, we, we digress to that anger because that's all we know. It and it's a crutch. It feels good. But when God starts to shine the light on it, when we do get angry, we have to be able to say, God, that's all I knew. I, that's all I've known is to get angry. But I see in your word, you says that my anger does not, does not, does not, uh, 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 is, is not part of your righteousness. Amen. My anger doesn't bring you glory. My anger doesn't change anything. And you did say I can get angry, but help me not to sin while I'm angry. That I don't lash out on people. That I don't punch somebody. That I don't, I don't, I, I don't treat people nasty. But that I, that, I, that, I, that I learn to say to you, Lord, I give you my anger and I take your peace. I give you my frustration and I take your, 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 your love. I give you, I, 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 I'm trading. I'm learning to trade, Lord. Trading those hurt, those pain that I don't walk around with it, that it doesn't keep me down, it doesn't keep me oppressed, it doesn't control me. I trade it to you, I give it to you and I take your love. And then we, com then we compare it as I close with Galatians 5. What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are good? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, those are the things that we think of. And then it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. So if we're acting in anger and hatred, we know that that's not part of his character. Because his character is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, uh, 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 gentleness, uh, temperance. Those are his. So if we're operating in the opposite, then we have to know, okay, God, this is not you. And I did it before, and I didn't even realize that it wasn't you. But now that I know that it's not you, help me to trade with you. So I give you my hate, and I take your love. I give you my anger, and I take your your kindness. I give them to you. And we walk that way. And all of a sudden we'll begin to look and to act and to be more like him. And it makes it easier for us to, for us to let go even when we have bad days. Even when we go through or we do or we, or we falter. Why? Because we're in a flesh. Yes, yes, yes. And we do get tired. And we do get overwhelmed and we do hurt, and we do get frustrated. But in those moments, we can say, God, I choose not to follow along, but I ask you for your grace for today. 
and he's a loving father enough to forgive us. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's what we need. God bless you. Hallelujah. And smile upon you. Amen. Amen.